Hello and welcome to Credit Matters TV. I'm Jeff Sexton. Today I'm joined by Lydia Parfeniuk for a discussion of the Canadian banks. Lydia, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jeff. Lydia, let's start off with this question, which is, what are the major credit factors affecting Canadian banks? Our outlook on the Canadian banking system is stable. Uh, however, there are uh, factors that we are looking at very closely, rating factors. Uh, one is consumer indebtedness in Canada is very high, an all-time high. And should um, home prices decline significantly and unemployment rise materially, that could have an impact on the Canadian banks' unsecured uh, consumer loan portfolios in particular. So we're looking at that very closely. So it is an issue that uh, we might see higher loan losses in that kind of scenario. Um, another issue we're, we're seeing is that um, uh, competition has heightened um, because uh, loan growth is slowing and uh, the Canadian banks are, are vying for uh, for, uh, for the loans, of course, as well as for deposit holders um, to boost their liquidity. And so the margins have been um, deteriorating or narrowing. That's, that has been an issue on, on the margins as well as profitability of the Canadian banks. Um, and then revenue growth has been slowing as well. So uh, we believe the Canadian banks will be making a greater effort this year to cut costs further. So where does regulation actually fit into the picture? Well, when you look at uh, the, the Basel III um, uh, CET1 ratio of the Canadian banks, of course, uh, capital requirements are, have been going up, and the Canadian banks actually do meet uh, the CET1 ratio fully phased in today. They're anywhere between 8.5 and 9.5%. And, uh, and so on that measurement, um, they are quite uh, well uh, capitalized vis-a-vis uh, -vis some other uh, global uh, banking systems. So where does the, a lot of been talk in the news about the bail-in system potentially in Canada, where does that actually fit into the picture? How does that impact our mm -hmm. ratings? Well, we're waiting for the bail-in to be introduced in Canada, and we believe that it may be into introduced later this year. And um, the way this might factor into our um, uh, ratings of the Canadian banks is that we will have to um, review the support that we give to the Canadian bank ratings in terms of uh, uh, extraordinary government support notching. So we talked a little bit about capital before. Let's go back there. Um, how are the Canadian banks faring in terms of capital? Uh, I just discussed Basel three capital ratios. We have our own proprietary measurement, the RAC ratio, risk adjusted capital uh, ratio. And on that uh, front, they're only adequately capitalized, uh, where their, their capital ratios or the RAC ratio is between 7 and 8%. Uh, adequate means between 7 and 10%. So they're sort of at the lower end of that. We expect uh, the RAC ratios to continue to increase with uh, fairly strong internal capital generation, but that will be constrained somewhat by further uh, share buybacks and, um, and higher dividend payments. So taking that into account, what is our outlook for the Canadian banking system and what will we be watching going forward? Uh, the outlook on the Canadian banks is stable. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, we're watching consumer indebtedness very closely. And should that lead to higher uh, loan losses for the Canadian banks in a stress environment, as I described earlier, uh, that could be that could cause us to um, to downgrade uh, certain ratings. Uh, also, heightened economic and industry risk factors. Uh, would play into that as well, that should there be a major decline in revenues and earnings of the Canadian banks, that could also lead to uh, bank downgrades. So a number of large factors to consider going forward. With that, I'd like to thank Lydia Parfunia for joining us. And from all of us here at Standard Poor's, thank you and take care.